Hello and welcome live to Macau for the decider of the 2007 FIA World Touring Car Championship. The cars already on the grid making their way round for the start of round 21 of the series, the penultimate race of the championship. And with six drivers still in contention, the championship remains as open as ever. So this is the view then of the Macau circuit, the Chinese race weekend, the end of 2007's campaign trails. Six drivers, two nine lap races and one championship title. For the last two seasons, it's been Gernsemann Andy Prio who has uh, taken the title here. The double reigning world champion is still in contention. He's one of two British drivers. He's one of three BMW drivers who could win the title here today. We also have an Alpha driver, uh, a Chevrolet driver and a Seat driver in contention. But after the first race, we will know a great deal more about the destiny of the title. And unless it is won by Nicola Larini in his Chevrolet, the chances are that he will no longer be playing a part in the championship. But the man who bears the Chinese lucky number eight is the man who starts from pole position after a scintillating qualifying performance. It's the Swiss Alamenu for Chevrolet who sits at the very front of the grid. Alongside me, David Leslie. Uh, thinking about the start of this race, David, we were just trying to predict exactly where the accident will happen before the start of the race because it's not if it really is where, isn't it? It is, and we've seen this in previous years, the last meeting at the cow. Off to go down this big long straight where they're starting, and uh, Jürgen, as, yeah, Jürgen Müller gives a little wave. When they get to the end of here, you've got this Boa corner. 90 degree right-hander, big, wide, dual carriageway road, turning into a very, very narrow right-hander. That's where it's happened in the past. We were trying to work out about which role of the grid will they actually first have an accident and then back everything up and then the red flag will come out and start again we've seen it happen for the last two years we don't want to see it happen again somehow i feel it might jörg muller here 15th on the grid he is the least well placed let's say he is the worst placed of our championship contenders in terms of his position on the grid and uh, Jörg, it's going to be a very uphill struggle for him. Andy Prio, not particularly well qualified either. He had a very disappointing time, made mistakes in his fastest runs, and he will start only in 12th position. The World Touring Car champion for the last two seasons here. He knows that it will not be over before race 22. And David, from 12th, obviously his target must be to get points in race one and to try and get into the top eight. Uh, without doubt, he's got to try and get himself up to 8th place. One point in this race, pole position for the second race. That's what he knows he needs as a minimum, basically. So he's got to go for it and uh, get himself from that 12, four places. Yes, I do believe it's possible. He knows it'll be possible. He's got to keep out of trouble on the first lap. It's all about keeping out of trouble on the first lap. We've heard so often already for qualifying with Augusto Farfa saying how difficult it is to get around that first corner. Indeed, and even Alex Zanardi here, his car was uh, destroyed, well, half destroyed during qualifying. We'll take a uh, quick look up the grid further in a second. So Rob Huff, seventh on the grid for Chevrolet, and uh, in fact, he is the least well qualified of the three Chevys. They've got extremely well here, as have the diesel engine Seat. Now, everybody was expecting them to be quick on the fast half of the circuit, but they've also been very nimble on the twisty part. This is Jordi Genet, and he is the least well placed TDI driver in sixth position. Now, of course, he's not going to be able to do an awful lot to help Ivan Muller up front, but he will be trying to keep all the other championship challengers, Thompson, M Muller, Jörg Muller that is, and uh, Andy Prio behind him, and possibly if he can get ahead of Nicola Larini here as well, who is our sixth and final championship contender, at least in terms of points, who's Chevrolet's championship contender as well, David, and that's really an important benchmark for them to be here at the final race with a driver in a Chevrolet shooting for the title. 
I think it's great for Chevrolet on two fronts. One, they've got a driver going for the title. We're looking at him now. And two, they've got a driver on pole position. So Chevrolet struggled a bit at the beginning of the season. Their car has got better as the season got along. And believe me, they are really happy with their car now. And uh, Eric Neve from uh, Chevrolet Europe is uh, very pleased with the pro progression that they've made with their car so much so that he's renewed the contract with the uh, team running the cars, that's the RML team, for the next three years. So look forward to these Chevrolets winning many more races. Third in the World Championship, currently 10 points adrift of our lead pair is Augusto Farfus Jr. And for me, really one of the real revelations of the season. Uh, all the wildness of the Alpha years has gone. He's really matured into a very quick and extremely capable driver. And Farfus, third best placed in points at the moment. Gabriele Tarquini, well, undoubtedly, David, he will have enjoyed Italy's uh, footballing result uh, overnight, well, very early hours of the morning. Uh, in Macau and uh, third on the grid really backing up Ivan Muller superbly and helping Ivan Muller by towing him around during qualifying as well to uh, what at the time was pole position Muller joint championship leader with Andy Prio although it shows him as second because he's had two wins like Prio but Prio's had four second places and Muller's had uh, just the one so uh, that's the way that the, the split will work if they end up tied on points Muller has to beat Prio on points a tie is not good enough for him unless of course he ends up with uh, one win more than Prio by winning race one and Prio not winning race two somehow Alan Menu though the man on pole position and uh, well four wins so far this season there's every opportunity here perhaps to make it win number five he's on pole he's not going for the championship which Ivan Muller alongside him is obviously Muller would like maximum points but uh, Menu may well end up as the season's top scoring driver uh, uh, top uh, scoring driver in terms of wins at least so uh, uh, that would be again you know another boost for uh, how competitive Chevrolet have been he's already scored more wins than anyone else yeah he's scored four wins already to go uh, Augusto Favos is there uh, three wins and Prio's two wins so you know he's there already as far as wins goes he's the same with their uh, pole positions and even laps led you know Alan Menu right up there and Chevrolet right up there they've just not been consistent for both races that's the yeah, biggest problem for exactly Menu. There's, there's unfortunately not a statistics table that says retirements immediately after winning a race because he'd be leading that as well wouldn't he yeah I mean you, you think even back as far as Zanvoort you know one race one and immediately retired from race two and and it's been sort of that that all the way through the season unfortunately yeah and the only driver to have more than one pole position is Alan Menu, mm -hmm. and he's just now taking his fifth pole position of the year now, out of 11 races he had his anorak zipped up didn't he after qualifying because he said oh yes oh. I think I had one other uh, good really good qualifying run which was Alton Park in 1986 or something and it's taken him a while to get another good one in but uh, he had four not too shabby ones to uh, take poles already so far this season I think he's done exceptionally well he with his uh, pole positions well. this season he really has committed when it needs to at the end of the sessions a really really quick lap and got himself that pole position yeah he reckons it is possibly his best single lap ever in a touring car and who are we to argue So down the hill they come towards uh, the end of the mountain section, I suppose you'd probably call it here at Macau, not strictly speaking a mountain, but boy, I bet it flipping well feels like it. Led by Alan Menu and Ivan Muller, our pole man and our top championship contender, joint series leader effectively in terms of points. Then uh, Augusto Farfus, then Nicola Lurini right behind him, championship contenders both looking for the next one back. It'll be James Thompson. Alpha, there he is, looking a little further back for Andy Prio and further back again for Jörg Muller, our top six in the championship, all with a hope here. Ude Schoenach there, Jaime Pooch, and uh, all the top bosses from Seat Sport in Spain here this weekend to see whether Ivan Muller can in fact clinch Seat's first FIA World Drivers title in anything other than a rally car.
And I have to say, it would be a momentous achievement, both for the Frenchman, uh, former British touring car champion, of course, who's uh, so recently joined the World Championship, and also for Seat themselves as well. At the end of their first three-year program, to claim the title would be really everything they could have dreamed of. And the answer is probably about an hour and a half away, David, as we get ready for this rolling start for round 21 of the series. And when this rolling start happens, there they are, two by two, and I'm fairly sure the power of the diesel, the seat of Ivan Muller, will make it down to that first corner first ahead of the Chevrolet, as bright as the Chevrolet may be. When they go now... Ivan Muller was already ahead of Alamenu, the pole sitter, as they crossed the line. He will have been ahead of him as they took the chequered flag. Ivan Muller should be penalised, and somebody's had an incident already hit the wall. Pierre-Yves Cortals popped out of the pack on the right. It was Cortals, the independence champion leader. He's broken his rear suspension. Muller has the lead by not much from Menu. Looking back from our race leader, you can see Jordi Genet battling Larini on the inside as well. Or was that Rob Huff? It was Huff. Look at this huge gaggle of cars. Tarquini up behind Menu. Farfus goes through into third. Ivan Muller makes it. Seat's uh, Chevrolet's all make it through. Jürg has got through. Prio's got through. All our championship contenders have got through in the main championship class. But Pierre Cortels will come into the pits. And his chance of winning the Independence Trophy may have gone within a couple of hundred metres of the start line. Well, David, no first corner shunt. That's really, really very surprising because so far the rolling starts have actually caused probably more accidents all year than they have stopped. And it's just the opposite here in Macau. And that was the one thing we worried about over the last two years. It's always been that first corner, that Lisboa corner, the very famous corner for having first lap shunts all through. And that's great to see because what we have now is a race. Ivan Muller first. Menu second, Farfus third, so three manufacturers, one, two and three. Right behind James Thompson, stunning start for one of the Aviva BMWs. Now I'm not sure if that's Duncan Heisman, a real expert here, or Colin Turkington, I'm Heisman. thinking Heisman. Okay. Stunning start, he was three rows, four rows behind one, two, three, four, five rows behind Thompson. That's astonishing. So it is Ivan Muller that leads. We ride with him, looking back at Alain Menu. Now, Menu must absolutely force Muller every inch of the way around that mountain circuit to try and wear out the Seat's tyres. He's got the extra weight of the diesel engine over that front axle, and that is Menu's only hope, because now he's in clear air on the far section. He is just going to select top gear and motor away, and already, look at the gap, he's starting to open up. Farfus in third, Tarquini in fourth, Larini and Huff fifth and sixth. So again, good start by Rob Huff from eighth on the grid and everybody kept their nose clean and it's been really great to see them get through that first lap because once they're through the first lap got a little bit of uh, air between each other then it's much more sensible of a race but you can see, see just how quick that uh, Seat Leon diesel is it goes down the straight there ahead of uh, Menu and the uh, Chevrolet, but fantastic uh, camera work. Looking at these cars coming down here, just how quickly they're going through and down the straight. You know, they really are so quick through the really fast corners. But look at that. And who's that? Taquini, Taquini trying pushing hard Farfus. to get past Farfus. And Menu now at the end of oh, the straight. Oh, him. Oh, yes, he has. Touch him. Oh. touched him again. And Taquini might find himself in real trouble with the stewards in a minute. But to, David. Under braking there, Menu was right again with Ivar Muller. So all the way down the straight, despite the power of the Seat, Menu was just close enough to sit in the toe and not lose too much ground. And that's right, he was able to get a bit of a slipstream to hang on to the back of the uh, little uh, Seat. Because remembering, it is a hatchback, it's not a sort of four-door saloon, so it does have a big hole in the back of the uh, air as it goes through the air. Uh, and it does help the people behind to sort of tow up behind it. 
and I think that's the one thing that has helped to uh, get Menu up onto the back of that diesel down the straights. But Tarquini very much wanting now to get past Farfus, and right behind Tarquini is Hoff, and yep. Hoff ahead of Larini. Yeah, he's got problems now, Tarquini, because Hoff is right behind him, and he's lost Farfus, and Farfus now. This is what we we're expecting to see a little bit. The BMW perfect balance around this twisty section, just pulling away from the TDIs, and the TDI using its diesel power to come back on the straight. Farfus is definitely made some breathing space and Huff can't quite stay with the uh, Seat in front of him either so Tarquini now can concentrate again after the hairpin on catching Farfus. Well this is going to be a real cat and mouse game incidentally Prio in 12th further back a little bit of a collision you can see the uh, Autodrome racing car of Henry Lee Jr. one of the Mackinac drivers and uh, I'm guessing that's either Romanoff or Louis behind him so two of the guys that were right at the tail of the field uh, their cars will be whisked out of the way last three cars on the grid are all bmws and i'm pretty sure it'll be uh, two of the local drivers one's got himself into a bit of a knot and the other one unfortunately just got stuck behind him he can't go anywhere but you'll see how quickly they will lift that car out of the way the guys here at this circuit are just so switched on with those cranes they don't even want the driver out of the car if necessary they will just hook it onto the side of the wheels up it will go and out it will go Here's Tarquini now, again right behind Farfus. Closer than before, earlier than before. Farfus right over on the driver's right down the straight. David desperately trying to defend the inside line. And we're not anywhere near Lisboa yet. That's still the Mandarin Hotel Bend. So we've got still the better part of a kilometre down here into the braking area. Menu again right with Ivan Muller. And Muller must have been hoping he'd be able to escape and nurse his tyres. Farfus though with Tarquini again romping all over the back of him there under braking. The two Chevrolets close right up. Behind them you can see, well further back behind Andy Prio, Ricard Rydell. Not really able to do much to help Ivan Muller. Well, Farfus is at the head of this uh, little group of cars and the lead pair escaping, as you can quite clearly see. Now, whether Farfus can't stay with them just in terms of outright pace or whether he can't stay with them because he's being so consistently attacked, I think it's a little hard to tell, but I think it may be down to pace. Menu, fastest lap of the race, and he's pulling away from Farfus all the time. I think these two are really very, very switched on. Uh, right up front there, and this uh, team manager uh, from Chevrolet having a word with the uh, Seat boss. Mark Busfield is having a word with Jaime Pooch, and he's saying, our guy is right behind yours. Yours is not in contention for the championship, and I think perhaps now that he's had his fun, he might be thinking about not ruining the championship battle for everybody else. I think that would possibly have been the message. There's certainly a very serious look at Mark Busfield's uh, and, there, was and that would be my going. bet of why Huff is in front of Larini, because Larini will assume that Tarquini is not going to be easy to pass. So if anyone's going to have to do a push to pass on Tarquini, i.e. tap him out the way, they will want it to be Huff if there's a penalty to be served for that rather than Larini. It's really of no consequence because up front you've got Ivan Muller. If Ivan Muller scores any points at all, then Larini doesn't have a hope of trying to take this championship away. He yes. will do very well in the championship, don't get me wrong. It would be fantastic for to see, see um, Chevrolet right up there scoring points in the championship. But uh, I think it's more about these two is why or what's happening with uh, Menu and Could be. Ivan Muller. Could well be. As you say, Larini needs to win both races with effectively none of the five drivers in front of him scoring anything. And actually at the moment, Nick is dropping away from... Uh, Rob Huff in front of him. There's Andy Prio ahead now of Alex Zanardi. So Zanardi has somehow managed to allow him to shuffle by. There you can see Duncan Heisman trying to put in a move on James Thompson. Thompson, of course, also a championship contender. Prio now up to 11th, but still he needs to be where Thompson is to try and get onto the front of the race two grid. Otherwise, the championship, unlike the two previous seasons, will slip away from him here. And Heisman was right on Thompson's boot lid there. There and looking again, Heisman a real expert here, he's won several times on the streets of Macau in touring cars, he really, really knows this place extraordinarily well. And you have to say, you know, Heisman's taken this car to first trip into the uh, series this year and uh, to be just so on it when the race started, 
taken away so many places, get himself right up there. But uh, the look of a slightly worried man at the moment, which is the uh, team boss for the Andy Prio BMW UK car. And uh, 11th place is not where they want to be. He is now on the back of the. Uh, that uh, Seat in front of him, which is uh, Montero, yeah. but he's still then going to get past Heisman and Thompson to get himself up into eighth place. Three cars directly in front of him. He's certainly got the pace now in the middle of the race, but four laps of a nine laps completed already. Yes, we're nearly at mid-distance and he's made up one place from the grid and that's really not very good. And it's not often you see Prio and Bart Mampai at a loss as to where the performance isn't. And this weekend, of all weekends, they just don't seem to have what they need and they're not sure where it's gone. Little slide out wide by Heisman there. He's under pressure now from Chago Montero. Of course, when they come down to the hairpin, the yellow flags are out permanently, so there'll be no passing. But Heisman has lost the tail of Thompson, and now he is at the head of a very long queue with Montero in front of us as we ride with Prio. Again, Prio out of the hairpin there, losing several car lengths to the two in front of him. It seems that the rear-wheel drives just don't seem to be able to get out of that hairpin as quick as the front-wheel drive for whatever reason. I can't see why that would be, but uh, that's the way it looks every time you watch it. But up front here, still the first two, Ivan Muller out there at the moment in front with the menu right behind. Farf has got a little bit of a breathing space over Taquini, but Hoff now a little bit further back, then Larini, and after that we've got Jordi Genet with the third of the uh, Seat TDI diesels. Well, as you saw, the championship projection is that Ivan Muller, if they finish as they are, will get 10 points to move on to 91. That'll move him 10 ahead of Prio. And Farfus will close up to just four behind Prio. So 14 behind uh, Ivan Muller. And this, if Muller wins this race, is going to very clearly rule out almost everybody else. Ivan Muller did say that if he goes out and wins his first race, then that will be fantastic. That's his aim basically after that he will then decide what to do in the second race how cool to play it what he can do if he needs to just sit in eighth place where he starts if he wins this one then that's what he will do to get that one point that will make all the difference and get him the championship but sitting somewhere in the middle of a pack in world touring cars is not an easy thing to do because these guys are all committed all the way down the field and even in eighth place nothing is safe Absolutely right. If he starts eighth in race two from a standing start, he will have a host of BMWs behind him, and the chances are he will not remain in eighth place away from a standing start. And that's got to be his worry. If Prio scores a point in this race, he could still win the championship. If he can get into eighth or seventh, then Muller has not as tough a task as Prio has right now, but he still has quite a job to do to get two or three points in the second race but yeah, there's a lot of ifs and buts Prio is still a very long way away from eighth 11th at the moment if Armola still leads and Alain Menu again setting another fastest lap last time round is still very close indeed but a little mistake by Menu that time and Muller comes onto the straight with the biggest lead he's had all race this might be his breakaway moment maybe he found something maybe Alan just missed his apex by a fraction missed a gear possibly by a fraction he's just just close enough to pick up a toe, David. He might not be able to break away yet, Muller. Farfus in third, has shaken off Tarquini. There's Huff. Larini is out of the championship now, no question about it. Thompson, I think, probably likewise. Farfus in third place. And if he can get into the points and into the top eight, Prio. But Prio is still stuck. There is Heisman, there is Montero, and there is Thompson in front of him. Prio needs to make up three places in the next three laps. And I just can't see that uh, Andy Prio is going to make it past that uh, Seat and past the BMW. Never mind getting past Thompson for that eighth place.
And Jay Muller, the team boss at N Technology, watching James Thompson in eighth place. And of course, that would give him, if he finished there, pole for race two. You're going to have to do some maths in the 15-minute uh, repair section uh, between the races, David. Would he still have a shot? I'm not sure he would. Not if Ivan Muller wins the race. If Ivan Muller does not win the race, let's say Menu does and Farfus is second if Muller retires, then I think the fairy tale is still alive for Thompson. My thoughts also on Prio's situation is obviously he has to get by Montero. That's not a given. If he then comes up behind Heisman as a BMW, will Heisman let him go through? It's possible he might do. I wouldn't say any more than that, but it's possible. He was a teammate with him last year. It is all in the BMW family, but of course then he's first he's got to catch Montero, even if Heisman is a given, and then he has to somehow pass Jimmy Thompson for eighth, and that's not going to be easy but either. But he's not really sticking with Montero. That's the biggest problem for Andy Exactly Priel. right. He doesn't have the car underneath him that he's had here in previous years, whereby he's had a really good car, very good handling, where he can put it where he wants it, lead the race and win, and so it's like he just doesn't have that ability this weekend he really is struggling to stay with the rest of them Auguste Farfus on the other hand has now been able to leave Tarquini behind and catch Alan Menu. well now every uh, world championship weekend for Prio has started with him on the front of the grid and maybe that's a good indicator for Ivan Muller as to what might be happening Muller still leads Alan Menu in second place and uh, you'll forgive us if we're not going all the way down the field to document all the other changes outside of the top 15. Uh, Jörg Muller in 15th place, rapidly disappearing from the championship frame. Larini in 6th, also disappearing from the frame. It's all now about Ivan Muller, Augusto Farfus, and possibly, possibly, possibly still Andy Prio. But if Prio doesn't score in race one, it is down to Ivan Muller to just cruise to the championship. And it's at the beginning of the season, maybe after Brands Hatch or, uh, you know, before they went to... Uh, before they went to Sweden, car number 12 under investigation, that's Ivan that's Muller, our race leader. And that's because he was ahead of Menu when he crossed the line. And maybe that was what Mark Busfield was going to talk to Jaime Pooch about. Something happened at the beginning of the race. We didn't see what it was. Obviously, the Chevrolet boys did. Chevrolet went and spoke to Seat first. Whatever the outcome was, I don't know. I think then after that, they went to the stewards and said something. And now, all of a sudden, we have this car 12 under investigation. Well, what that we need to do now is have a difficult. look again at the start, because clearly Menu was not in front of Muller. They're supposed to be side by side, but you are not allowed to pass the race leader before you cross the start finish line, before the lights go green, or when the lights have gone green. Now, Muller's nose was in front. The whole car was not in front, but he was not alongside or behind the nose of Alan Menu. His nose was in front. He had made a move before they got to the line. And a championship is on the line. You've got to be really, really sure about the rules. And I'm sure, and there you go, looking, the in the, looking in the blue book. Now, how much do you call a pass? So we do, <laughs> not Alan Menu, we're being told that there, there, there is a query about a jump start against Alan Menu. Alan Menu is not car 12, Ivan Muller is car 12. So the query about the jump start is against Ivan Muller, our race leader, and potentially our championship winner. Now, what would the penalty be, David? The penalty can vary, depending upon the stewards, they can make it anything from a time Ten penalty. It could drive be through points on his license it could be a fine it could be a drive-through it's too late for a drive-through they're now starting the eighth lap they've only got one more to go after this 10th so place grid drop for race two um, I mean you know it's it's whatever they have applied before for jumping the start must be the same uh, must be the same penalty applied this time I can't think that they have actually had a jump start previously so I think that could be uh, quite difficult but uh, Obviously, it was noted straight away at the very beginning by these guys, the Chevrolet yeah. guys. I have to say they are very good at that sort of thing. Well, we called it as it happened. And 
they spoke to Siad. Yeah. I think that was very gentlemanly of them. And uh, whatever happened after that, we don't know. But now, all of a sudden, the officials have hold of it. So it's up to the officials to uh, make whatever decision they feel is correct. And we will not know for a little while. I'm sure they will have to make it in a hurry before the start of the second race. Absolutely. Because if they're going to imply a penalty, then that penalty will have to be in place before the grid starts for the next race. Remember, you've only got 15 minutes between this race and the next race. Uh, we've got 15 minutes repair time, but there is more time than that. But normally, a jump start penalty is applied during a race. Now, they've already had 20 minutes to think about it. So they really need to do some digit extraction and make a decision. I mean, otherwise, you might find that the potential winner of the race, Alamenu, or the potential winner of the championship, Augusto Farfus, get tangled up in an accident behind somebody who really shouldn't be out there at all. Because look how much Farfus is close. Farfus was the better part of two seconds behind these pair three laps ago. One lap ago, he was 1.5 seconds behind Ivar Muller. Now, he's 0.7 of a second behind Ivar Muller. If that, the three of them are running nose to tail. Muller's tyres are really... I'm not going to say Mullard, really struggling now at this... And then there goes Menu now. He can't. It's, it's stationary it's yellow. yellow flags. That's but suddenly Muller pulled off line and slowed right down. And, and there is Menu. No, there is not Menu. Yeah, that is menu a new first. back from Menu. And Muller's third. Muller stopped. Muller has nearly stopped. That's him going round the corner there. So Menu had to pass him or hit him. And Farfus has gone by as well. When you have a, a problem, then yes, you can go past. But all of a sudden, drive shaft. Thought, it could be anything. Something, something this. instant and mechanical like that. Definitely, that was not running out of brakes or running out of tyres. That was in a in a in a big and going bang sort of oh, a manner. Oh, oh Farf was very wild. Onto the last lap they go. So. Alamenu leads from Augusto Farfus and now Gabriele Tarquini's attempts to pass Farfus are really, really critical for Seat. This to, lap, this to lap he has to do deny it. Farfus the points to close enough on Muller. It is the last lap. He's got to go. He has got to force the issue and suddenly, look, he's electrified now. Rob Huff in fourth place, waiting to pick up the pieces, maybe for a Chevrolet 1, 2, 3, because that car way in the distance there. There is Larini. Oh, and oh, he game. has hit him. Round. Huff's going to miss the damage go, now. Go, Tarquini, go. no question, will be investigated, and no question will be penalised for that. But the bigger penalty is that Farfus is out of the championship. So, so is Muller. Uh, uh, well, Muller stopped. stopped. We knew that. Farfus is out. Udishona can't believe his bad luck. But Prio may now end up in eighth place. Thompson's got uh, Thompson's ahead of Montero and Heisman, but we have lost two cars. We no. have he was Ninth. eleventh. He, he was eleventh. We've lost was, two cars. It was tenth right, across the line, while Ivan Muller didn't cross the line. We've lost far first, that makes him ninth. Okay. He's still one place away from where he needs to be. Tarquini will be penalised. He may be penalised by being penalised 25 seconds or by being excluded from the race, which might put still Prio into the top eight. Meanwhile, Alain Menu heading for a win. As, as many wins as the oh. next two most successful drivers put together. No. Win number... Next five successful drivers. No, we're not all put together. <laughs> win number five of win the season. Win number five. Win number five of the season yep. coming up for Alamenu. Let's not count five too many chickens. Three and three or two, you're correct. Indeed. So, Alamenu is going to win the race here. Second is Gabriel Itak. Queenie. Where's Third? Oh, of course, sorry, yes. Third, Third is, Huff. is Huff. Oh, Fourth is... Jenny ahead Jeanne of Larini. ahead of Larini. And, and look at the queue and of cars. No, he still has not got by Montero and Heisman. Andy Prio needs Heisman to slow right down. But it's going to be bow tie day for Eric Nev as Alain Menu comes around the R bend, out of Fisherman's, down towards R bend, and the checkered flag and victory in round 21 of the FIA World Touring Car Championship. A topsy turvy last two laps. I'm sure you made a better job of uh, getting your head around that than I did.
it. Alan Menu, though, our race winner. Gabriele Tarquini in second. Rob Huff in third. Ahead of Janae Thompson Montero across the line. What happened to Heisman and Prio? Janae. Janae was fourth. there, fourth. Thompson, Heisman. Prio's eighth. Prio is Larini eighth. Is missing. The championship is alive. Larini was seventh. Montero sixth. Heisman. Heisman. <laughs> took one for the team and dropped back to ninth place in the last couple of corners behind Montero. Montero got ahead of Larini. Larini was struggling towards the end, obviously, but Heisman took one for last year's teammate here in Macau, Andy Prio, for BMW. Instead of starting on pole for race two, he starts ninth and Prio starts on pole. The championship takes another twist as Menu becomes comfortably the most look at his look at the grin on his face you can't see through the balaclava but it's you can see it in the eyes menu is absolutely thrilled with that take them any way they come win number five of the season for Alan menu wow well there was seven and a half laps of cat and mouse games and what ifs and what ifs and maybes and buts going on and then in the last lap suddenly last lap and a half from the retirement of Alamin uh, of uh, Ivan Muller suddenly everything that was impossible for Andy Prio became possible and David Farfus is out but Thompson was fifth so Thompson may end up <laughs> Again, going up ahead of Augusto Farfus in the championship. Now, what happens to Tarquini? We will have to wait and see. Farfus clearly is unlikely to play any major part in the championship from now on. And Ivan Muller as well. You saw the reaction of Uke de Schonach, the man who's run his car for the last two years. Absolutely distraught, as Muller himself must have been. And I can only surmise that it was a drive shaft or a, a gear train failure of some kind. Andy Prio now with a single point moves on to 82. He is one ahead of Ivan Muller. He is 11 ahead of Augusto Farfus. And uh, he is nine ahead of James Thompson. The championship comes down to Prio versus Thompson and Muller, Ivan and Ivan Muller it's a three-way battle if Muller's car can work well, these are the pictures after the first race here at Macau. Andy Prio suddenly handed a gift by the Almighty. Two gifts, in fact, three on the final lap. Adam and you there are race winner with Rob Huff. And the big drama, well, the, the series of big dramas, starting first with uh, the mechanical failure of Ivan Muller's Seat. And uh, carrying on then with Gabriele Tarquini uh, nerfing Augusto Fox out of second place and out of the championship and then with Andy Prio somehow managing to finish in eighth place in the second race. Hello to everybody wherever you are watching across Europe, across the Asian Pacific Basin and in the Intercontinental Hotel. I tell you what, you may have had a good end to the British Touring Car Championship in Thruxton but uh, this is going quite some way towards matching that as well. And disappointment for uh, those of you at uh, VXR Racing. Uh, Ivan Muller, it seems, is out of the championship here. But one of your former drivers, James Thompson, now looks to be the only man who can stop Andy Prio taking a third world title. Sebastian's with Alan Menu. Let's hear from him now. Alain Menu, an incredible race out there. How did you manage to take the win? Well, that was... That was and at the start I could not do anything, I mean even at the inside line for uh, Mandarin, so I had to let him through. Uh, actually, I had the gear. Um, and then after that he drove really well, didn't make a mistake. He started to slow He stopped, but uh, his car is just so quick out of the corners, you know, when they go on power, it's like I can't do anything. I'm as quick, if not, I'm actually faster through the corners. But, uh, uh, well, we have uh, a yellow flag, so long while and I realized okay it's definitely great. 
I'm sure you can fill in the blanks in that one. Uh, the story of the race as seen by Alan Menu, which was couldn't do much about Muller because of the fast three kilometres of this six kilometre circuit. And then suddenly it was handed to him just before the uh, Melco hairpin when Muller's car just suddenly slowed offline. He knew there was something immediately wrong. Muller pulled offline, avoided, well, as the race leader, causing a major multi-car pileup. And uh, that's the end of his championship, David. Whether they can repair his car or not, he will start right at the back of the field. In fact, uh, the timings have him classified as 27th, which would be where he starts. And from there, even eighth place is a very, very long way, unless you've it's got a, a, a whole load of Exocet missiles on the front. It's an absolutely massive ask because starting that far back on a circuit where the overtaking opportunity is at the end of the big long straight. Now here we see the points, Andy Prio one point ahead of uh, Ivan Muller, James Thompson nine points behind. Those three still in the hunt. Augusta Farfus now out. Yep. Menu has moved up into fifth place, now 13 points behind. Because Jürgen's Jürg out and, hasn't scored and any. out, yeah. So he's there. So Menu climbing the order, and he may well score in race two as well. Of course, he will start eighth with, uh, well, potentially Tarquini in front of him, but uh, certainly Huff next up in front of him. And Prio, eighth place in race one, will either start on pole position or if something happens to Tarquini in second, but still on the front row of the grid. So let's take a look at the manufacturer's points and David, it's, oh, I can't do maths as you well know, but goodness me, I don't, think, I don't think I can keep up with this. Two points between Seat and BMW. Now maybe Seat will be able to uh, overhaul BMW and take the manufacturer's title even if they can't get the driver's crown and they would be pretty much happy with that I uh, think. Without doubt they'd be very happy with the manufacturer's championship but they reduced the points deficit from 10 to 2 during that race and now they will be looking to make sure they can try and reduce it that little bit more come the um, second part but there we are the first of two Chevrolet drivers on the podium. That's Rob Two Hats Huff there. Gabriele Tarquini in second place. And our race went around 21 of the series as he has been already four times this year, Alan Menu. Fantastic result, fantastic qualifying lap. He thinks his best ever single lap in a car. And uh, in se second place for most of the race, but stuck to it, persisted. And in the end, the reward came to him, courtesy of great misfortune for Ivan Muller in both terms of the race and the championship. And now a moment as we pause while